spiders. Love them or loathe them, you can't help but be slightly impressed by the webs that they make. Someone who is particularly impressed with spiders' webs and the silk they're made from is material scientist Chris Holland. When I first started my job, I was always a little bit anxious about where spiders were in a room with relationship to me. But as soon as I started working with them, I got very, very used to them. And you realise they're very, very sort of kind beasts. I would say that they wouldn't hurt a fly, but they obviously do. But they are absolutely adorable little things to work with and very, very predictable once you understand their natural behaviour. Silk has some amazing mechanical properties that makes it really, really attractive for scientists and engineers. If we look at spider silk, we find that it is stronger than steel, it's tougher than Kevlar, which makes it really, really good in terms of competing with our other plastic types of fibres. It is the ideal fibre that we would like to try and mimic industrially. Now, that can be ranging from using them in composites for car panels, but it could also be used for different types of parts of your own body, actually, because it is a natural material. The body understands natural materials and can actually help heal and improve different parts of the body. We're often asked as silk scientists whether you'd actually see a spider silk bulletproof vest and I can tell you for sure it would be a fantastic vest, it'd be very very thin, it'd be as thin as this shirt and it would definitely stop the bullet but the problem is, is that spider silk is extensible and so it would stop the bullet and it wouldn't break but it would stop the bullet about two metres behind you. An amazing thing about spiders is that they don't just make one type of silk. They actually have about seven different types of silks inside them, and they can pull a specific type of thread out for a certain use inside the web. Now, an example of that, if you go to the web at the bottom of your garden and you touch the spokes that come out of the centre, they're not sticky and they're quite stiff. But then if you touch the threads that go all the way around, you actually find that they're very, very sticky and they'll pull away with your finger. And those are totally different types of materials, a sticky silk and then a stiff silk for the scaffolding. Now that's known as dragline silk. Dragline silk has these amazing mechanical properties, but one potential sort of difficulty that might make it a bit challenging if we want to use it for our industrial application. If you get this spider silk wet, it shrinks, and it shrinks and becomes a little bit like a rubber, and so it loses a lot of its fantastic mechanical properties when it gets wet. Scientists and engineers have been working for many, many years to try and replicate spider silk. And we're getting there, but we have to understand both the spinning process itself and be able to replicate the natural material. Now, we're quite good at replicating the natural material, but the spinning process is still a mystery to be unravelled. One of the questions is, what happens inside a spider to make this material called silk? This is an example of a red kneed tarantula from Mexico, and these make quite an interesting type of silk that's used to coat the burrows. It's essentially a wallpaper. Inside the spider, at the back, we have all sorts of interesting bits, such as the um, lungs, and we take away the sort of reproductive sections, and we start to find these interesting little glands here at the back of the spider. Now these glands are known as silk glands and that's actually where all the silk is produced. Now it's stored inside these glands as a liquid gel and just through the act of pulling it through these specially shaped ducts it comes out of here at the spinnerets as this amazing fibre. So silk starts off as a liquid and transforms into a solid. We're all fascinated and big fans of Spider-Man here in this lab. And some of the things uh, have a little elements of truth in it and some of them's not so much so. What we'd actually see is that Spider-Man wouldn't be able to fire silk out of his uh, web spinning devices. Spiders actually pull silk out of their bodies and so Spider-Man would have to sort of bungee jump and repel off the sides of buildings. The importance and use of understanding the materials that you apply for engineering applications is absolutely critical because it's the material properties that underpins everything that you can possibly do in terms of engineering. You cannot make tall skyscrapers without the strength of the steel frame that creates it. You cannot create lightweight aircraft wings without understanding exactly how the composites that are made go into it and reduce the weight of that structure. And so only through the materials understanding can you unlock the power of the design applications? If you're at school now and you're really interested in trying to understand materials, the world is absolutely limitless. If you look at something like the snail slime at the bottom of your garden, we don't really know too much about the snail slime. Anything that you look at in nature, we can still ask some really interesting and useful questions about it in the future. And so as long as you're enthusiastic and really, really interested in these fascinating materials, I think the world's your oyster.